Welcome to a very special edition of Live at the Legislature. We're coming to you live Tuesday, March 17th, with the fast-moving developments of COVID-19 being here in Hawaii and the steps that we're taking at the Hawaii State Legislature to deal with it. We have a special episode today with two guests, both from the Senate and the House. From the Senate, we have Senator Roz Baker, representing South and West Maui, and she's the uh, chair of the Commerce, Consumer Protection, and Health Committee, which is going to be critical <laughs> to dealing with this. And sitting a far distance away from her, <laughs> we have House Majority, House Majority Leader Della Albalati, who represents Makiki, Tantalus, Papakolea, Makoli, Pa'a, Pa'ava, and Manoa. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, this is a somber episode for us uh, because the legislature just announced that it's going to go into recess mm -hmm. tomorrow. Senator Baker, can you tell us a little bit about how that decision was made? Well, I think the legislature was trying to follow the best advice we could get from the CDC as well as uh, the health professionals here on the ground. So we decided to pause. We pushed the pause button and decided that uh, we would go back to our districts or work uh, tele uh, remotely using uh, uh, the technology that we have to make sure that uh, we took care of our families and our citizens as well. So we passed some important pieces of legislation uh, before we left, but uh, the Senate concurrent resolution uh, allowed us to be on recess from three days to eight weeks uh, or at the call of the Speaker and the House. Um, the Speaker of the House and the President of the Senate. So uh, we're going to be working remotely. We're uh, making sure that uh, all of our families are taken care of, and we want to make sure that the public stays, stays safe and follows the directions of the CDC. And one of the last actions the Senate took before uh, going into recess was to confirm the head of the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency? Uh, we confirmed the uh, Adjutant General. He'd been on an acting basis, uh, General Hara, and he's uh, the incident commander for all of our activities uh, out in the field. And so we were happy to do that to make it official uh, what the chain of command was uh, in our state for these activities. Majority Leader Bellotti, I know that this decision uh, involved the highest levels of the House and the Senate coming together in an emergency meeting yesterday morning to decide how to go forward. Can you tell us a little bit about how it happened yesterday? Well, I think it's really been so fast moving. Like you said, you know, last week, Friday, we were looking at an abbreviated session, mm -hmm. but really the guidance coming down from the CDC that no more than 50 people should be gathered really, really drove our decision to go into recess. Um, what I would like to really emphasize is that recess is not the legislature shutting down. We are functioning. And there are, there are just three examples. You know, yesterday after we recessed, we had senators looking at very important language in the supplemental proclamation. And I think a letter is going to be circulated to the governor that's going to ask him to make sure that he adds uh, EMTs, first-line personnel, APRNs, because they were left out of the uh, supplementary pro proclamation. We're going to really need all hands on deck with all our health care providers, so we want to make sure that they're going to be able to act. Another way that we're going to continue to function is that the House is going to continue to meet with our House Select Committee to look at economic and financial preparedness. Um, both the Senate and the House are in coordination with our congressional delegation, and we want to make sure that we're going to be positioned. We want to deal with the immediate uh, relief that we're going to have to deal with, but we also want to make sure that we're going to be positioned for recovery and rebuilding when we get through this as a community. And thirdly, I want to say that all members, senators and representatives, are available remotely. Constituents can call into their offices and email them. So the legislature is still functioning. We are here and we are taking care of the people's business. And the Capitol is still open. Our offices are open. We have uh, minimal staff because we want to honor the CDC. But yes, we are at work and we're still working. It really is a situation where we're just trying to keep down the number of people in rooms. Yes. So holding a hearing without the public being there is impossible. And that's creating a situation that the CDC has advised us to avoid. Yes. Well, one of the uh, proclamations that the governor did sign was to um, allow our boards and commissions to meet remotely because we have a lot of licensing boards uh, and they need to be able to continue to pass on whether it's medical licenses or renewals of APRN or nurse licenses or other contractors licensing board. There are lots of our professional vocational licenses that you can't operate in our state without them being up to date. And if the boards could only meet in person in public, 
then that may have hindered their ability to do the work that's necessary as we go forward. So part of the governor's proclamation was to waive the Sunshine Law for those particular boards and commissions. And what other measures are we taking to help parents and working families who are affected by the school closures? I think that's one of the reasons why the DOE decided to extend for another week because those kinds of decisions need to be made across the community. Families are going to have to determine how they are going to have child care, how they're going to uh, do telework. I know in my office we're going quickly through this week identifying ways in which we can telework and that's what every business right now should be doing and, and trying to figure out. And yesterday, uh, Honolulu confirmed its first case of community spread, a worker at Kulo Ranch who came into contact with a lot of people. So we know it's here in our community now. We don't really know the full numbers because there's only been a limited amount of testing. So what advice do we have for the public to avoid spreading it, especially when we're trying to make sure that our kapuna and other vulnerable people in our community don't get this disease? I think now is the most important time that we practice social distancing and we really have to do it for the benefit of others, for the greater good. It's not just ourselves. Um, to the degree that you can self-isolate, we should do that. If you feel sick, you should not go to work. Um, if you are subject to any of the criteria for screening or testing and you have a fever, you might have traveled recently, you, you should go to one of the 42 sites that have now opened up for screening. I want to caution folks, screening and testing are two different things. Um, we are trying to get out more widespread testing and I know Senator has been a huge advocate for ensuring that testing and screening is occurring on her island. Um, more sites are popping up and you can f um, identify what those sites are by going to the Department of Health website. Uh, we have great partners in the community so there's lots of ways that we can help ensure that people are self-isolating and taking care of the community. Well, and just good personal hygiene. Mm -hmm. Wash your hands, cover your nose and mouth if you're sneezing, or, or better yet, sneeze into a, a, a Kleenex or a, a, a wipe that you can throw away. But we need to take all of those kinds of precautions because we need to look out for the most vulnerable in our community and the best way we can do it is the social distancing and taking care of to make sure, as uh, Representative Bolotti said, if you're sick, don't go to work. We've, uh, if the businesses may be laying off people. So one of the things that uh, has been in the uh, emergency proclamation is you don't have to wait a week to file for unemployment, and you can do that remotely. So I think it's important that people um, be aware of their surroundings, uh, make sure that the distance between them is uh, at least an arm's length. The CDC, I think, is now saying uh, six feet. But to wash your hands, cover your cough, uh, don't sneeze, you know, be mindful of the people around you, and let's try to curtail the spread of this virus in our community. Yeah, we all have to do our part to yes. reduce the spread. Yes. Um, last week, you went to Maui Memorial Hospital with uh, some of your Senate mm -hmm. and House colleagues who are from Maui. How did you feel uh, uh, their preparations are going, and do they have any needs that we need to work on? Well, I was pleased with the preparation that they had already undertaken. Uh, rather than allowing people just to come into the ED no matter what, uh, there's a triage a nurse a practitioner and another individual out there who are screening so that we're not sending sick people into the ED who might be spreading the virus. So that was really pleased. And we got a confirmation from uh, the Healthcare Association of Hawaii that if there were needs that our hospitals had, they have reserves, they can get them out, get them uh, shipped to Maui or to Kona or uh, to Molokai, Lanai, wherever, Kauai. Mm -hmm. uh, often uh, out to the neighbor island so that our people can get the masks and get the other equipment, the testing kits. But I just want to underscore what uh, Representative Bolotti said. Uh, if you have symptoms you, and you think you might have, you need to get a prescription from your doctor in order to get the test. We do not have enough tests to screen everybody who might think they might be exposed or might have been exposed. So it's really important that they consult with their uh, primary care provider and get that prescription and then we can make sure that we can start containing because now that we had, can test here, we don't have to send them back uh, to Atlanta, to the CDC, we'll know, we'll have a much greater turnaround and then we can give comfort to people 
uh, that maybe are negative but think they might be positive, and then if somebody tests positive, we can take the appropriate steps to make sure that it's not being spread by them. Thank you. Um, Majority Leader Bilotti, a lot of uh, things on Oahu have been closing. The mayor announced that he's canceling all major events and all events at the Blaisdell, uh, Bishop Museum, Arizona Memorial, a number of pla uh, Honolulu Museum have all announced that they're shutting their doors. Um, how is this impacting Oahu? I think we're going to see a slowdown in community activity, and I think at this point in time it's appropriate. Mm -hmm. When we look at the places like Wuhan and Italy that didn't get ahead of this, we are seeing tragic consequences, and that is exactly what we want to avoid. We want to put people first here. I think there is going to be economic hardship. That's why we continue to work in coordination with the executive and with our congressional delegation. But I think we're going to see a slowdown, and I think that's the appropriate choice at this time. Uh, changing quickly to some other subjects, you're both <laughs> members of the Women's Legislative Caucus, and uh, we've, we've since canceled all floor presentations for the rest of the session, but before we did that, we had uh, small business awards the other week, mm -hmm. and for the first time, the majority of the winners were women entrepreneurs. Tell us a little bit about that event. Uh, that was really exciting. I think that was the first time uh, since we've started doing these kinds of awards that there have been so many women uh, on the floor representing businesses that are thriving in our community. So that was exciting. Uh, it's also the 100th year anniversary of women's suffrage, of women getting the, the right to vote. So uh, there have been a lot of very positive and good things on the Women's Caucus side. And I think we have some bills that we passed that are going to help with victims of domestic violence and trying to make sure that women have the same opportunities as uh, their male counterparts in a variety of uh, fields in our community. Excellent. And, and so the, the session's in recess, but we'll be able to come back later, hopefully, and finish yes. those out. Yes, yes. We're, we, we, as I said, we've just pressed the pause button. Mm -hmm. We are still working here at the Capitol, and uh, once uh, the, the crisis of this virus passes, we'll be coming back into session. The speaker and the president will call us back in, and we'll finish up. And Representative Bilotti, do you have anything you'd like to add about legislation that's on pause for the moment? You know, we have a lot of bills, important bills that are moving. Um, I'd like to say something maybe about our joint majority package. Mm -hmm. You know, in some ways, our um, tax credit bill, a minimum wage bill, while likely um, most in jeopardy because of the financial situation, is something that's actually a really critical piece because that's maybe one of maybe one of the ways in which we can offer um, economic relief to folks um, who will probably suffer the most yeah. in this um, pause situation. The other thing I'd just like to add for. You know, the governor has called on uh, businesses not to price gouge and not to really set up scams for the most vulnerable in our community. So the Office of uh, Consumer Protection is where, that, that's a part of the Department of Commerce and Consumer Affairs, and that's where people can call to report price gouging or anything that they feel like is uh, not right uh, from, a, from a price perspective or a price gouging perspective. Uh, and their phone number is 586-2630, 586-2630, the Office of Consumer Protection. Excellent. And yeah, we all need to work together to make yes. sure that we protect people in our community. Do you have any more advice for people, what they should be doing now to prepare? So I think it's really important, especially for those families who may have uh, the keiki staying home. Mm -hmm. You know, while we are social distancing, I think it's really important to know that there's lots of ways we can stay in contact. I think calling your kapuna, emailing, Skyping with them, checking in with that elderly neighbor. You know, I think one of the things that we're going to see out of this is the issue of mental health, which we are both very concerned about yes. over the years. And there are ways that we can get through this as a community. You know, yesterday, um, my daughter, my husband, and I, we actually cooked a meal together. So she's learning how to cook rice. Um, I, think, I think those are the kinds of things that, you know, while we all take a, take, hit the pause button, if we can connect in other real ways, that's another way that we're going to get through this. It's really important to focus on the, on the mental health and, and reassure folks that th we're going to get through this. Yes. We have to take some extreme measures at this point in time. But if we stay calm, we practice good social hygiene, 
uh, we, we, we focus on the mental health of, of especially the most vulnerable around us, mm -hmm. we're going to get through this. I, I love um, going on Facebook and seeing what some of the uh, actors and actresses are doing to kind of lift the spirits. You know, yeah, we are, we're not able to go to a sports event now, but we can still connect with one another. We can, we can visit with each other online, you know. And, and really trying to take care of our neighbors. You know, if there's somebody living in your apartment complex or down the road and you know that they're not able to get out, maybe go offer to pur purchase some uh, groceries or uh, get a takeout meal. So you're helping the local economy and you're also helping your neighbor. That's really great. Well, we're almost out of time, but thank you so much for joining us on this special edition. And thanks to everyone at home for being with us today. And a special thank you to our crew from Olelo who came in today under the circumstances to help us get out this important information to the community. Everyone look out for each other out there. Stay safe. We'll get through this together. Yes, we will. And as you see, we're sitting apart from each other and I won't <laughs> shake your hand, but uh, we do look forward to having you back and uh, resuming the session as soon as possible. Thank you, Senator Baker and Representative Bilotti, and thank you all at home. Aloha. Aloha. Doing. We have to go. I'm gonna be late for work. It's Tuesday morning. I gotta record live at the legislature on Alelo. Senate and House leadership discussing what's happening at the state capitol. So just watch it on the news tonight. Come on, let's go. Hey, this is like getting the news before it's news. If only I could get this remote to work. There. Can we go now? No DVR? No problem. Watch Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. on Channel 49.